Junie B. Jones is not a crook by Barbara Park. Chapter six, my grandpa's wallet. I kept my pin in my pocket the whole rest of the day. I didn't want people to see it or else they might tattletale to Mrs. and she would make me take it to the lost and found. I behaved myself very good because I didn't want to attract attention. That's why. I kept my hand in my pocket so my pen would not fall out. Also, I kept thinking about my mittens because I still miss those furry guys. I put my head down on my table. Maybe my grandpa Miller might buy me some more furry mittens, I said, because that would be a perfect solution, I think. I raised up my head. Hey, yeah! Then I would have wonderful new mittens plus a wonderful new pen. And so what more can a girl ask for? That's what I'd like to know. I sat up in my chair and tapped on Lucille. Guess what, Lucille? Maybe my grandpa Frank Miller might buy me some new mittens and then all of my troubles will be over. Lucille said, whoop de doo for me. I know it's whoop de doo I said, real thrilled. And so thank you for your support. After school, me and my best friend named Grace rode the bus together. I ran home from my corner like a speedy bullet. My grandpa Frank Miller was basing my brother named Ollie. Grandpa Frank Miller! Grandpa Frank Miller! Grandpa Frank Miller! We gotta go to the mitten store! We gotta go to the mitten store! I hollered real loud. Grandpa Frank Miller was in the living room rocking Ollie. He looked funny at me. Go where? He asked. To the mitten store! To the mitten store! We gotta go to the mitten store! I pulled on his hand. Get up! Get up! Let's get a wiggle on! Grandpa Miller looked confused at me. That's how come I had to sit down. And I told him of what happened at school. Someone stole my mittens, I said. That they stole them while I was being brownie. And I didn't even know there were crooks at that place. Grandpa Frank Miller shook his head very sad. Oh, I guess you can find crooks almost anywhere, honey, he said. I know it, I told him. That's how come I, I'm never going to see those furry guys again. And so you and me have to go to the mitten store. I felt in his back pocket. Then I danced around real thrilled. Hooray, I shouted. Hooray for your big fat wallet. Because you got cash in there, right, Grandpa? Right? Right? Grandpa Frank Miller laughed. <laughs> yes, I do. I've got cash, all right, he said. But I'm afraid we won't be able to buy you more mittens. The mittens I bought you were the only furry ones they had left. I bought the very last pair. Just then, all the happy went right out of me. Because I, I didn't actually count on the ter that terrible development. Yeah, only we have to, Grandpa. We have to buy more furry mittens. Or else, what will I even do? Grandpa Miller ruffled my hair. Did you look in the lost and found at school? He asked. I did. I did a sad breath. <sighs> yeah. Only that dumb thing doesn't even work that good. Because people don't always turn stuff in. I patted my new pen in my pocket. Trust me on this, I said, real soft. Well, your mittens could still turn up, he said. Folks will surprise you sometimes. Then he told me a story about his wallet. A few years ago, I lost my wallet at the mall. I was sure I would never see it again, he said. I bobbed my head up and down. I know it. 
That's because of finders, keepers, losers, weepers, I said. Finders, keepers is the rule. Right, Grandpa? Grandpa Miller smiled. Well, it might be the rule for some people, he said, because the very next day, something happened. So I'm lucky it's not the rule for everyone. When I got out to get my mail, there it was. My wallet was sitting right smack in the middle of my mailbox. And not one single penny was missing. His eyes looked happy and sparkly. Can you imagine that, little girl? He asked. Someone had the chance to take everything in my wallet, but instead they drove all the way to my house and they put it in my mailbox. Just then he reached in his back pocket and pulled out his wallet. Look what I would have lost if they hadn't returned it, he said. He took a picture out of his wallet and handed it to me. It's you. It's it's you, Junie B. Oh, it's you and a, and a baby, I said. Well, that's not just any baby, he said. That's you, Junie B. That's a picture of the very first time I ever held you. He took the picture back and stared at it and stared at it. Nicest thing a stranger ever, ever did for me, bringing this picture back, he said. Then he leaned over again and he kissed me on my head.